What's up guys, welcome back. So as your YouTube subscription feed will undoubtedly indicate, AMD's high-end line of 8-core, 16-thread Ryzen 7 chips have just hit the market, comprised of three SKUs based on the Zen architecture. From lowest to highest, they include the R7 1700, 1700X, and the 1800X. At their press event last month in San Francisco, AMD revealed an aggressive pricing scheme and touted some impressive data against the competition. Bear in mind, of course, to always take manufacturer benchmarks with a tiny grain of salt. While I won't be able to give an analysis of the R7 lineup in its entirety today, AMD did send me home with their flagship R7 1800X, a response to Intel's Core i7-6900K for about half the MSRP at just 500 US. The price point will be easily confirmed by trusted online retailers, so that leaves the proof of performance on the shoulders of the reviewers to see if the 1800X is the disruptive animal AMD claims it to be. That said, there's still much to discuss about Team Red's newcomer before it steps into the octagon with its heavyweight rival. To reiterate some of the vital specs, the 1800X packs a lower 95W TDP than the 6900K, with a base clock of 3.6GHz and an auto-boosting technology that functions similarly to Intel's Turbo Boost. In multi-threaded workloads, the Ryzen chip will boost all cores to 3.7GHz. A boost to 4GHz is possible, but this only applies to a single core during a single-threaded task. During my single core runs in Cinebench R15, hardware monitors showed one and sometimes two of the cores boosting to 4.1 GHz while the others remained at their idle state frequencies. This extra 100 MHz is courtesy of AMD's Extended Frequency Range, or XFR technology, which bumps the core to 4.1 GHz if cooling conditions allow. As far as I know, AMD hasn't confirmed exactly how this is defined, but clearly my Noctua air cooler and ambient temperature of 24C helped XFR reach its threshold. Since all but one of today's tests utilize multiple cores, however, XFR and the single core boost feature won't have much of a positive impact on performance, so I decided to overclock all cores on both CPUs for today's benchmarks. At AMD's press event, the rep hosting their overclocking demo recommended enthusiasts not push past the 1800X's stock V-Core of 1.35 volts, so staying at the base voltage I was able to achieve just 3.9 GHz before reaching any instability. Suffice to say, if you were hoping for overclocks well beyond the 4 GHz mark, you'll be sorely disappointed unless you keep a tank of LN2 handy. The rep did mention that the silicon lottery will pay out the occasional 4 or 4.1 GHz part, with 4.2 GHz capable chips being more of a Powerball jackpot. Now, given Ryzen's low TDP compared to its Intel counterparts, I was excited to test thermals today, but for starters, the chip is still too fresh to be fully recognized in the usual suite of monitoring apps, and even if they were, I've been informed by the ever-so-perspicacious Steve of Gamers Nexus that Ryzen temps may not be represented properly via the software due to AMD using similarly faulty temperature diodes as their older FX chips. To no one's surprise, Gamers Nexus has the proper equipment to sidestep this issue, so in the description I've linked their Ryzen video for those interested to learn more. Now you probe that chip, you hear me Steve? You probe it good. Now we're just about ready to go gloves off with these two, but first a quick look at the separate test beds they'll be using. You'll notice our 6900K has been overclocked to 4.3 GHz and we're using the same memory capacity and frequency, albeit a quad-core channel kit, for X99. The Noctua cooler on our 1800X was a special AMD edition that only included an AM4 bracket, so for the i7 I employed the most similarly spec'd air cooler I had on hand, this Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. Both systems are running the GTX 1080 Founders Edition with the latest 378.66 NVIDIA driver, and all games were tested at 1920x1080, 2560x1440, and 3840x2160, aka 4K. Without dragging this out any longer, folks, it's finally time to see how these two CPUs stack up, and who will go home with all the glory. Assuming they don't tie, then I guess they would split the glory? I, it doesn't matter. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the benchmarks.
So as the data shows, the 1800X is by far and away the fastest processor from AMD that we have seen in years. With the current pricing at the time of publication of this video, it's an easy pick over the 6900K for video editors on a quote unquote budget, as it delivers some quick encoding times that would likely be unmatched by a quad core i7. Intel's six core 6800K may still be in the running, however. In game, our two contenders saw a handful of stalemates, but if you look closely, this was a repeatable trend at the higher resolutions of 1440p and 4K, indicating a GPU bottleneck. At 1080p, when the test becomes CPU bound, the 1800X falls behind every time, suffering the most in Doom, apart from having favorable 0.1% lows, and Metro Last Light with concerning 0.1% lows and 8.5% slower average frame rates. Now it's been established that the 7700K's higher IPC often makes it the better gaming chip over the 6900K, so this positions the 1800X as a less compelling option for diehard gamers, especially at a 43% price hike over flagship Kaby Lake. One area where 8-core Ryzen appears suited for gaming is when live encoding is thrown into the mix. Playing Doom on Ultra at Quad HD while streaming out to 18060 scaled all 16 of our logical cores and kept up with the 6900K by delivering fluid gameplay and zero dropped frames. In this regard, the 1800X makes a case for hardcore streamers who might value the encoding capabilities over raw FPS, particularly if they'll also be cutting up highlight reels with video editing software. Additionally, users interested in purely gaming should continue looking to the i5 and i7 KB like options for now. From a gamer's perspective, AMD may have lost this first battle, but the war is far from over as we anxiously wait to see if upcoming Ryzen parts will offer higher instructions per clock to better compete with KB Lake. That's all I got for now, guys, so let me know in the comments what you think of Ryzen so far and how it's measured up to your expectations. Before you guys go, don't forget to toss me a like on this video if you enjoyed it. You can also check out my store and get five bucks off if you buy one of each of my two new shirt designs, Evolution and Crystal RGB, because together we can light up some crystal. As always, I am Kyle with Bitwit. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see y'all in the next video.